All right, so we know that when we have multiple forces acting on an object or body, that their forces can be replaced by a single force that has the same, same effect on the object as the original forces did. In this case, forces P, Q, and S can be replaced by a single resultant force, R, that will have the same effect of the first three forces on that object. Now, what if we were given the resultant force first, and then we were asked to find forces P, Q, and S? Uh, okay, so now we have to work backwards. To start off, the forces P, Q, and S would be components of the resultant force R. We know that. So when we, when we are asked to find the forces that make up the resultant force R, what we're really trying to do is just to find the components that add up the resultant or that add up to the resultant force R. In our case here, the components of the resultant force R would be forces P, Q, and S. There are two ways we can find the components of a force. The first is when we have, or when the resultant force and one of the components of the force are known. So let's say we have a force F uh, drawn here and it's acting on particle A. If we already knew one of the components of the force, let's say P, then we could easily find the next component of this force using a graphical approach. Using the triangle rule and the tailed tip method, we can draw a force from the end of P to the end of F. This force we'll call Q. The second way is when the resultant force is known and the locations of the lines of action for the components are known. So let's say we had another force F and we wanted to find the force components that act on these two lines of actions. If we knew the angles at which these lines of actions were from the original force, in this case angle alpha and angle beta, or some other angle of reference, then uh, we could use good old trigonometry to figure out what these force components may be. So using trigonometry, uh, you can find the magnitude and the direction of force components. And there are two really important laws from trigonometry that we need to use to help us resolve forces into components and even to figure out the resultant forces from multiple forces acting on a particle. And these are, or these two laws are the law of sines and the law of cosines, something you may be already familiar with. And in the next few lectures, we'll actually go ahead and review these two laws. And then in future lectures, we'll apply these laws uh, to figure out the magnitudes of unknown vectors.